You know, um, I never took meds before. You know what I mean? But like you just said, I think I could have justified <laughs> for taking whatever the <laughs> whatever those meds, mm -hmm. you know, that that was given, especially in the prison system. You know, yeah. because um, once you came in, it was yo, you want something to sleep? You got twenty five to life. You 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 might need something. The doctor hit you off quick, and then they put you on this <laughs> this long term regimen of, of your life. You know, um, so. I, I'm saying that to say, like, I think I determine, I, I think I um, associate this with the will, to sh because some of us, like, like you say, we all have different DNAs, you know, um, but we all have a will, and it's whether you know you you strong in your conviction with yourself, because I'm going through that with a brother right now. He, my brother's in and out since since 1985, did five years, did six years, came home, did four years, then came home again, he did. Uh, Rick is Robert, Rick is Robert. Years. Rick is Robert. And now he's back in again. He can't seem to stay out of, he don't, because his drug addiction too, mm -hmm. this is associated with his drug, and him not wanting to take full accountability and responsibility mm -hmm. of his life yet. He's, I'm 52, my brother is 56, 57. And he still went, and I just spoke to him yesterday. He's in the North Carolina prison now. He he got, you know, he was on life parole. They let him go to my, live with my cousin in Raleigh, North Carolina. And he went That's out there and found the hood. <laughs> he went and wow. found the hood again. You know, and now he, he has uh, eight years out there. And then right. he has to, he has to come back to New York because they want their life parole. They, they, they not finished with you, you know, but when right. does, when is enough for enough? You know, he's not addressing the issue. And I think that that's because he doesn't have a strong will within himself. He's allowed himself to, to fall into this space where, you know, it's not like Anthony. Anthony said enough is enough and he meant it. Right. This was something that he, he encourages and he performs every day of his life. You know, um, going to these classes, going to, you know what I'm in recovery classes, going um, self care, taking, you know, making sure that he he acknowledges that, you know, self care is a part of that therapy. Putting in that work, That's putting true. in that work. Yeah, so and I didn't even tell you. The will, so if anybody could speak to that will. Yeah, well, Amanda is in North Carolina. I didn't. Yeah, even, yeah I failed to mention that. So, <laughs> Raleigh, I was, Raleigh, I was just telling her, look for, you know, places near you so we can mirror that model and that's why we're on shows like this is because the message is the message is it's all out there it just has to come together with the will the realizing that hey you can't do it by yourself the realizing that some people need counseling others need medication some people need a deeper relationship with their higher power nice. maybe some people need all of it and i want to win <clears throat> and, and, you know, it's, that's so true. And you have, I remember when I was ripping and running the streets. And when I say I love the streets, boy, I loved the streets. I loved the excitement of it. I love being around people that didn't look like me, talk like me, act like me, because I was, I was brought up in this small little rural town, country girl. And so when I saw diversity for the first time, I'm like, you know, like yeah. I love it. this is exciting. <laughs> and so I just gravitated towards it. And, and I had so much fun, you know, doing it. What I, what I thought, well, it was fun. I do have to say it was fun, but until it wasn't. It wasn't until right? it wasn't. You know, that was that part of that independent stage too. Wait, yeah. it wasn't. It came up on you quick. You didn't know that. Now I'm stuck. Am I right? Yeah. Right. And you know, yeah. and I think that that's the whole uh, facade, and that's that's the whole out of body. You know that we're not living in ourselves. We're really. <clears throat> that's why when I say you know I I'm living my truth. I really am. Um, I speak with substance. I live with purpose. Vice versa whatever you want to say, but mm -hmm. it's the truth. You know, um, I, <clears throat> I have refused to allow everything that I have done, put my son through. I'm a mother, you know, I'm a single mother of a 19 year old that went through hell while I was gone. 
this young little boy at nine and a half years old live years without his mother. That's not fair, you know. And there, there's so much to that. It's a little off. I, I could go on about that forever. But it's it's a byproduct of what my choices were, you know. Mm-hmm. And everything, uh, like what you were talking about, um, What were, remind me of what you were just talking about, Sarita. Oh, that, you know what, there's so many different facets that someone might be lacking. And it does all relate back to what you're talking about, loving yourself, knowing yes. who you are, yes. being able to identify what's missing from my cogs on my wheel. And just knowing that you need it, knowing yeah. that there's a problem, you know, looking That's at your first action, step. Yeah, your actions, your reactions, your lack thereof and saying, hmm, this doesn't really align right you know but you have to get to it you just have to get to a place where it's just not fun anymore yeah and sometimes like your like your friend or your brother they don't they don't they don't get the opportunity to reach that because what happens if they don't get the opportunity they go into a place like the penitentiary and for men it it has to just be so much different Yes, it's hard for us, and there's a lot to that, but there's a different type of hard for you guys, you know, and and a safety factor, and it changes who you are. It changes what could have been, like truly what could have been, and it it's just sad. It's so sad to me that people miss the beauty in life because they haven't dug deep enough to find out that they actually are missing out on something. Some of these people, they don't even know that they're missing anything. Yeah. Well, the first and step the, is admitting there's a problem. That, that's that, right. That's the bottom, that is the bottom line. You guys hit the Absolutely. Number. So I got a, I got a guest that's, that's in the bottom and I'm going to bring this guest up real quick. Cause okay. I would like for y'all to meet, you know, um, our brother, our brother, Mr. Michael Marshall, Michael Marshall served 30 years. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. 30 years. Jesus. And, and, and I think that he could speak to um, mental health issues with just being in there and the challenges that us as men that you were speaking about go yeah. through incarcerated mm-hmm. with mental health issues. This is Brother Michael Marshall works for Exodus Transitional Community, helping the community now. You know, he's been home for about I'll say a little over two years now, if I can remember. You know, not that I'm counting. Yes, I am. I'm trying to be trying to get him off parole. That's right. Hey. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Me too. I just got, Me too. I just got yeah. off August, August 10th, 2020, 2023. And we're looking for the brother to get off as well as Sarita. So That's so right. Speak on it, Mike. Don't forget about me. Yeah. yeah. Um, I I next that. month will be uh, almost three years for me. And I'm supposed to be getting off parole um, next month. Oh, congratulations. Um, hopefully, hopefully. Um, yes. Mental okay. health, I believe all of us have mental health issues to a degree. Um, Even the ones who have never been incarcerated. For me, I, I facilitate mental health issues, or I equate mental health issues with how we um connect with society, right? Mm-hmm. Social constructs control a lot of how we think. And I think this is imprisoned individuals to agree mentally because we try to live up to things that we think we know, mm-hmm. but that we've been um, taught. It's been embedded into our character. That's right. And I think this is, destroys individuals from within mentally. Um, when it comes to the, incarcer- the incarcerated or individuals who've been in the box for a long time, you know, I think the individuals, they've witnessed what it can do to a person's mind, mm-hmm. right? How, how it could slowly biodegrade how individuals mm-hmm. thinks and how he sees the world. Yeah, but I think that is our responsibility as individuals to use our mind as a tool instead of using it as an outside force. I think that this is where we go wrong because I think the solitude is what we need as individuals mm-hmm. to escape the, the, a reality for us because the reality is not really a reality. I call it the matrix only because mm-hmm. everything's been made up, mm-hmm. right? But we think it's real, like, like, and we say, Oh, why are you not eating breakfast? I said, but who says breakfast was breakfast, right? So I control me now. Before I was controlled, right? Yes. Um, 
I used to buy into things. Now I create things. So yeah. I think that mentally we have bought into an aliati so much that we've imprisoned ourselves and it's driving us crazy because we can't keep up with it. Mm. Um, this is just the first step I think into mental health because it's about self care. Um, right. Images, um, feeling pain and emotions. We chase these things because we are connected so much. We are plugged in. He or she made me feel this way. I feel this way because there's rain outside. You know, we we always are connected to our emotional feelings instead of our intellect. Mm -hmm. Our intellect connects with how we think, which is yeah. our mind. And a lot of times we can't control our mind. Our mind is outside of us because we let it dictate. Instead of it being our friend, it's actually become our enemy. And when your brain becomes your enemy, you can't control it in a lot of ways because you hear voices, you start to hear things that you created, but you think they're outside monsters. They mm -hmm. become outside monsters because you've allowed your mind to take control of your reality. All right. So I just information I, again. I yeah. just tried to um nice. tell individuals to unplug from the matrix and it all disappears.